Virginia where we wrap up the Big 12 on ESPN. The fifth game of the day and the stakes are high as two teams try to boost their resume in the nation's top conference. It's Oklahoma in town taking on the West Virginia Mountaineers. And they are ready inside the Coliseum. They know how important this one is. It has a postseason feel to it. They're both down there toward the bottom of the Big 12 Conference. But everybody knows how good this league is. Any little jump you can make today, it's for the eighth spot, can mean a lot down the road. Courtside alongside the former Baylor guard, King McClure, Chucky Kemp. Those folks behind us are going to make life very <laughs> difficult for the Sooners tonight in this building. You played here. Yeah. What's the mentality coming into a building like this? Man, you just have to stay mentally locked in because it is not easy to focus. You can lose your concentration, especially with the students, student section yelling all types of things at you, calling you all types of names. You have to stay locked in for 40 minutes. Well, they know this students are ready. They know what happened in Norman a couple weeks ago a one-point loss in Norman one they feel like they probably let slip Jalen Hill and company led the entire way from tip to final buzzer they did it Joe Tucson at 14 it just wasn't enough they could never get over the hump Grant Shurfield and company held them off it was a crucial win for the Sooners both teams shot it really well that day the difference though West Virginia was really bad at the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this, it's the free throw, obviously. But what stood out to me was the fact that Oklahoma just dominated them on the offensive glass. Normally, when you think about West Virginia, you think about the toughness. You think about Bob Huggins. They're going to send about three or four to the glass every possession. But Oklahoma out-rebounded them and, and, and did gave them a dose of their own medicine. When you look at the Big 12 right now, if you look at the top and the bottom, what will probably differentiate it is wins in close games. These are Big 12 games only this season, decided by seven points or less. Both teams have struggled in those games. Oklahoma, one of their two wins in the six tries was against West Virginia. The Mountaineers have let some slip. They're just one in three in those games. We expect the same tonight. Yeah, this is going to be a great battle. The first one was a great battle. And when you look at their records in conference, two and seven, you would say that they're struggling. I'm not going to say that they're struggling because they've played a lot of games, a lot of teams close, and every single team they play, majority of the teams they play, they're top 25 opponents. They're high-quality competition. So I wouldn't say they're struggling. They just have to figure out how to get over the hump in those post games. West Virginia is 24th in the net rankings, 19th in Ken Palm. Oklahoma on the other side. 56th in the net, 44th in Ken Palm. This will be a quad one win for Oklahoma. If they're going to do it, Grant Sherfield has to be effective like he was against Alabama a week ago. And I think the biggest thing for Sherfield is you have to be able to affect the game in, other, in ways outside of scoring. He's such a dynamic scorer. He's a great scorer. But in conference, his scoring has went down. I would love to see him be more of a facilitator, get his teammates involved, and affect winning outside of just scoring. On the other side, it's Eric Stevenson, and what a game he had a week ago. Both those guys enjoyed the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Stevenson had a career-high 31 against Auburn, earned him Big 12 Newcomer of the Week in two wins last week. They beat Texas Tech. They beat Auburn. They didn't play well midweek, though, at TCU. Yeah, I mean, the last matchup, last time these two teams played, I think Oklahoma did, I thought Oklahoma did a great job of pressuring Stevenson and getting, making him uncomfortable. Limiting his shots, he only had nine points last game. They made it really tough. He took the one at the end, which was a really questionable shot. But they did a great job focusing on him, and he was definitely an emphasis on their scouting report during today's shoot-around. It's 8 o'clock here in Morgantown, and there are 14,000 strong ready to roll. And you see what's on the line. Our bracketology, Oklahoma right now, the last four out. West Virginia, the last four in. This win could very well flip the script in those. I mean, yes, there are nine games left in the regular season. They're starting to matter a lot right now. Yeah, one thing Porter Moser kept emphasizing in the shoot around is this is a quad one win. This is a quad one win. That both a lot, a lot is on the line tonight. I mean, this is going to be a great matchup. Both teams have a lot to play for. I'm excited, Chuck. You ready? I'm ready, man. I am ready. <laughs> been a long wait for this one all day long. Got a chance to talk to coaches today. Porter Moser and Bob Huggins have not shot away from the fact that this is huge. 
And here we go, the fifth and final game of the Big 12 slate. Alongside King McClure, I'm Chucky Kemp. Thanks for joining us, folks. This should be a good one. West Virginia starts with the ball. What are we looking for first couple minutes in this game? Well, I'm looking to see Trey Mitchell get become aggressive in the first three, four minutes of the game too, too many times. He'll get aggressive, he'll start off hot, and then he'll just shy away. I want to see him be aggressive, the same Trey Mitchell, for 40 minutes of the game. Big change in the starting lineup for Oklahoma. Bijan Cortez replaces Jacob Groves, who's been a starter all season long. There's a turnover. And Stevenson pulling up. Can he get hot? Misses. Cortez rebounds. What do you think of that switch, though, in the starting five? I, I like this. It's going to push the tempo. One thing that Cortez does when he comes into the game, he is the guy to get the rebound, push it down, and transition, and really try to start the fast break. You're playing really four guards in a big. Illegal screen called against Tanner Groves. He picks up his first 57 seconds in. West Virginia, familiar sight in the starting five. Kedrian Johnson dealing with a little bit of an ankle issue, but fighting through it. Here's Trey Mitchell, one of his first touches. Good defense from Jalen Hill. Johnson oh, contorts his body and finishes in the paint. And last time these two teams played, Keydrian Johnson had 13 points. Such a dynamic finisher. Cortez with a nice take, and he'll go to the line for two shots. Foul against Eric Stevenson, his first. Let's take a look at this layup by Keydrian Johnson. This is just great timing. Hanging in the air, waiting to the last second so that Jalen Hill doesn't block it. Great finish right there from Keydrian Johnson. Cortez hits the first free throw, averaging just over three points per game. The last five games, Bichon's had two or more assists in each. And he is creative. He'll make a couple mistakes here and there. But he is a guy who can really create some things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really for this. Because a lot of times you watch Oklahoma's offense, it gets really stagnant. They're really good when they're moving the ball, when they're spreading it around, and running their offense efficiently. I think with B. John Cortez, it gives another ball handler, another playmaker, that can help the offense. Stevenson hits the triple. And that's a great sign. When Eric Stevenson is going when he's hot, this West Virginia team is very hard to beat. Contact. Offensive foul, and Tanner Groves has two in the first minute and 50 seconds, and Sam Godwin is off the bench. Eric Stevenson is heating up right now. That's too much space. You have to be aware and know where he is at all times. Well, that's an automatic bucket. Stevenson was 0 for 4 from 3 in the first meeting. He had only 9 points, but he already has 5 tonight. Looking for a few more. Stevenson uh -oh. from the corner. He's on fire. It's a party in Morgantown. Uh-oh. This is what happens. You start feeling it. You let a shooter get going. You let a scorer get going. And all of a sudden, that rim is as big as the ocean. And right now, his confidence is through the roof. When they're on, this can be one of the toughest buildings in the country. Eric Stevenson is a guy who feeds off of every ounce of emotion in this building. This is trouble for Oklahoma. You look at what they did to Alabama last week, but sandwich on both sides of that is a loss to TCU and a loss to their rival Oklahoma State. They were down 10, five minutes in to both of those teams. And they're seeing it again right now, already down eight, just over two minutes in. Yeah, this, right now it's just a matter of being able to find Stevenson and where he's at. I mean, they're allowing him to get a wide open looks off of the the pin downs off of the trail screens. He's feeling it. You have to be able to lock and trail and be there on the catch.
Porter Moser's second season. The Big 12 is a monster, and he knows it. Cortez, great take from Bijan Cortez. And that right there, when you switch, a lot of times West Virginia does not switch. They normally hard hedge, which can cause problems. But when you switch and leave Jimmy Bell on a guard, you get those opportunities. It's great recognition from Cortez to see it and exploit it. Mitchell skips it. Oh, my goodness, Stevenson. And he missed that one. They got away with it, but lost him like you talked about. Sherfield, three ball, good, and that's a huge shot from Grant Sherfield. That's a guy that can also heat up very quickly. So he sees one three go in. Let's see what happens next. Kedrian Johnson fouled on his way to the hoop. There's Cortez bucket, Jimmy Bell. Not a great on the perimeter guarding guards. Bijan Cortez recognizes that, and that's an easy two points. And then. This guy right here, Grant Sherfield, whose numbers have not been the same in conference, but he's still a dynamic scorer and one of the best scoring guards in the Big 12. And Sherfield was good in the first meeting with West Virginia, 22 points, five assists. That has been one of his better conference games as Johnson hits the first free throw. Fifth year player out of Dallas, Texas. Temple College transfer. He's a lone returning starter and a leader on this team. And he gets both free throws, which is a good sign for West Virginia fans as well. Otega Owe, that's a good take from the freshman. And Porter Moser just has to find a way to get Otega Owe on the court. He just brings such a difference to this team. He brings the athleticism that they really do not have. He's been playing a little bit more over the last four games, about 12 and a half minutes per game, five points. Had five steals against Baylor. Mitchell skips it. Stevenson got it. Just too much space for Eric Stevenson. I mean, right there. Send the double in the post, but you have to know where Eric Stevenson is. You have to play the percentages. Leave KG and Johnson open. Do not leave Eric Stevenson open. Foul against Trey Mitchell guarding Bijan Cortez. Look at this replay right there. Otego away just gets caught looking, gets caught staring at the ball when they send the double. You cannot. You have to stay attached. Be there on the catch so he cannot get it up, especially right now. Jacob Groves retrieves it in the backcourt. Sherfield. Long ball. And that's a good sign. Two of them already for Grant Sherfield. Chucky, I feel like we're going to be in for a treat Ooh. if those two guys get going. We are going to be in for a great game tonight. I think we're both all right with that. A couple guys going for 30 plus. I am so cool with that. Stevenson is hunting right now. Off balance, whistle. We'll see who they get with the foul, but a lightning quick start for these two teams offensively in Morgantown. 15-12. This is the last game of the Big 12 slate. Well, what a start in the Coliseum. They're loving it behind us. 15-12 West Virginia leads Oklahoma. And our two stars, Grant Sherfield and Eric Stevenson, have shown up early on. Chucky, this is what it's all about. I mean, in the game that means so much. This is a must win for both programs. So their star players have to be their star players. The best players have to be those guys tonight in order to will their team to a victory. And that is what we're seeing. Stevenson so dangerous, plays with so much emotion and confidence. And the start he's off to, you have to think if you're Oklahoma, you got to find a way to make him miss a couple just to get it in his mind or something. <laughs> but I will say this, the response from Oklahoma, that was important for them. Yeah, it's huge. Because the way the game started off, it could have turned ugly really quick. West Virginia could have went on a run. They could have extended that run. But kudos to Oklahoma and Grant Sherfield, Cortez being able 
to keep their calm, keep their poise, make the right play, despite the crowd going bonkers. I'm in trouble on the inbound here. James Oconquo in, Stevenson rims off. Offensive rebound! Trey Mitchell found himself a treat. Jalen Hill, haven't seen much from him so far. Here's Jacob Groves. He misses, tipped out for Stevenson. Okonkwo, that's too easy in transition. Now, one thing about Okonkwo, they talk about him so much. They think so highly of him on the defensive side. When he is in the game, their defense automatically gets better. Huggins said, this is one of the worst defensive teams he has ever coached. But when Okonkwo was on the court, it goes back to the West Virginia defense that you're used to seeing. Foul on Mitchell, that's going to be his second. And when you play good defense, you can get out to the break, but also offensive rebounding is a staple of who West Virginia is. And on the flip side, good stops lead to great transition buckets. So Mitchell's going to come off, Joe Toussaint on. Mitchell has two for West Virginia. Tanner Groves has two for Oklahoma. As a whole, these are a little bit smaller lineups in for both teams right now. Yeah, this is a lineup for OU that you typically don't see. Jalen Hill at the five, and now you're playing with four guards. I actually like this. Spread the court, make them step out and guard you, get into your offense that way. Corner three, open, no good. That's Joe Bamasil. He's had played just six minutes in Big 12 play so far, but he is a guy who can score. Scored 16 a game at George Washington. Good defense, better shot from Stevenson. My goodness. Yeah, Stevenson is in one of those moves. He's in one of those flows that is extremely hard to get. Whoever guards him is going to be in for a long night because he's feeling it right now. Hill. Had a chance for three, and now a whistle against Oconquo. That's his first foul. Okay, it's right here. This is great defense. Joe Bamison is playing, guarding this about as good as you can guard it. You force him into a tough two, but he finishes it anyways because he is feeling it. He is in the groove right now. West Virginia by nine. Nolan. Got to get one off. Yuzan, deep three, no. Rebound, Matthews. Tucson in some trouble. Crossover. Oh, splits the defense. Nolan helped in the end. It'll stay on this end. Adrian Johnson trying to carve him up right there. The one thing this lineup allows Oklahoma to do on the defensive side is switch one through five. Because anywhere you go, Jalen Hill at the five can guard any position. Matthews lost it, but a whistle. Oklahoma foul. Bijan Cortez back at the table for Oklahoma. The starting five for OU, putting Jacob Groves onto the bench, bringing him up. And Porter Moser said he's not going anywhere. It's just we're trying to get him going. He felt like he was might be pressing a little bit at the early point in games. So they'll bring him off the bench. But he's still a big part of what they're going to do. But... Just trying to throw a wrinkle into things. These teams know each other so well at this point in the season. And we're seeing a little bit different look from Oklahoma tonight. Stevenson spinning, no. Rebound Hill. Jalen Hill, coast to coast, a great finish with a left hand. 
And that's one thing. Whenever you come into Morgantown, you come to this step on this court. You have to go in and finish strong. Right there, Jalen Hill does a great job taking the contact. Good finish. Cortez draws the offensive foul. West Virginia turnover. Man, you're probably going to get fouled, and they're not going to call it. But this is a great take right here from Jalen Hill. Good finish. That snapped an 0 for 4 streak from the field for Oklahoma. Cortez trying to get shifty. Lost the handle. A little too crafty there. Matthews over the top and gets the bucket. Goblin was in the restricted circle. Well, nobody stopped him, so he said, all right, I'll go the distance. And it's the number one rule in transition defense. Somebody has to pick up the ball from the three-point line. If not, bad things tend to happen. And Sam Godwin was on the line. Feet were on the line. That's the right call. That is a blocking foul. Matthews at 11 points in the first meeting with Oklahoma. It's an 86% free throw shooter on the season. Spent his first three years at West Virginia, went to Washington for a year, and that cheer is for that man, Eric Stevenson, who will get a quick rest. Does not complete the play, but Oconquo keeps it alive. Extra pass, Johnson, no good. And a battle underneath, foul against Jacob Groves on the rebound. Porter Moser disagrees. Yeah, and this is where Oklahoma is going to have to be tough. They have to be tough as nails because right now you're dealing with size advantage down low. You're dealing with mismatches everywhere on the court because the length of West Virginia can really bother you. And when you have Okonkwo, Jacob Groves is a wing player. He is not an interior post player. So now he's having to get physical and body up against Okonkwo every single possession. So that's something that we need to take a, take a look at. The matchup right there between Okonkwo and Groves, how will Okonkwo be? Will he be able to dominate Groves? And so far, the answer is yes. Well, West Virginia was out-rebounded by 10 against Oklahoma in Norman, which was unexpected by the numbers and the personnel. But Porter Moser and company found a way, and it was Yuzan and Sherfield who were big on the glass running in to collect loose balls. They're gonna have to do that tonight. West Virginia early on is plus two in that category. Conquo hits it. And right now, Oklahoma's front line is thin. So when Tanner Groves goes out with two fouls, your next option is Godwin, and Godwin is now in foul trouble. So your next option, your best option, the tallest player on the court is Jacob Groves. Yuzan, they got caught in between decisions. It'll stay at that Here's end. The on the floor. Oklahoma looking for answers, though. Down 11 on the road. The offense has stalled since that first media timeout. 25-14 to the delight of the West Virginia faithful here in Morgantown. Bob Huggins leading the charge for this team for the 16th season. The Hall of Famer inducted to the Naismith Hall of Fame last year. 929 career wins, not too shabby. A Final Four in his third season here in Morgantown. And we got to talk to him today for a long time. You can probably sit there all day and listen to his stories. Yeah, I mean, he... So much knowledge, so much history of the game. And to be able to sit there and talk to him, you know, one of those coaches that you just feel honored to talk to almost in a sense. He sat there and talked to us about an hour today. Just talked about everything. We talked about the game first, then talked about life afterwards. He was super cool. Groves trying to feed it inside. Stevenson got a hand on it. No surprise Tanner Groves is back in right now, is it? Yeah, because you have to be able to control the glass. That's an area where you're getting dominated. And you need Tanner Groves to be able to step in there and be able to compete on the glass. And the biggest thing right now is he has to play without fouling. He cannot pick up that third or he's going to the bench for the rest of the half. Sherfield, tough shot. Rebound Oconquo. 
And that's one of those shots where I think Sherfield should have kicked it. I mean, we see him a lot. He's, he is the go-to guy for this Oklahoma team, but he forces a lot of bad shots. Oh, and Groves hit the ground and immediately is holding his left elbow. Hopefully, just a little shaken up and he'll be all right. Let's take a look underneath the basket right here. One on one, trying to block out. Maybe just hit his elbow. Nothing intentional. He'll take a look at it. It looked like there might have, like Oconquo might have dragged him back a little bit when they got tangled up, but we'll see what the official review comes to. John Higgins, Kelly Self, Amy Bonner, our officiating crew this evening. Tanner Groves, in a little bit of pain still, but seems to be all right. Here's a better look of it here, possibly. Well, it's hard to tell there. Yeah, it was just incidental contact. Nothing over the line. It was nothing. Just a, a regular, should be just a regular foul. And that's what John Higgins has relayed to us, just a common foul. And here's the good look of it right there. Yeah, it's, it's a physical ball game. And and that's, why you that's why you love the interior of West Virginia. Those guys are ultra physical. You have, have to match it every single time you step on the court with them. Might have been the knee of Wilson, actually, when Groves was falling that made contact. Cortez blocked off the glass by Jimmy Bell Jr. Toussaint. They like that matchup with Tanner Groves in the corner. Stevenson stripped away. Owe with the steal. He missed it, but Hill is there to clean it up. It's an easy putback for Jalen Hill. That's why I'll take Owe has to play for OU because of his defensive presence. He had a game against Baylor where we had five steals. He does a great job of getting the passing lane and using his athleticism to cause havoc on the defensive side. Had two steals this week against Oklahoma State as well. And he's drawn Eric Stevenson. Six to shoot. Stevenson rises up, contested. No good, falls for Jalen Hill. And they'll run a little bit here. Two on two. Sherfield steps back. Hits it. Big shot from Grant Sherfield. Those are the shots I like for Sherfield. I like him uncontested. In transition, that's a great shot. His shot selection has to improve. Again, the Sooners with a nice response after a West Virginia run. Groves has to be careful with two fouls. Matthews off the glass, no, rebound Hill again, and Matthews is down on the baseline. It's a five on four. Sherfield, got it, Grant Sherfield again. In rhythm, off of the ball screen, one dribble pull up into it. That's a tough shot, that's a great shot right there. Very much like Stevenson, when he starts to see him go in, it can be a long night for opposing defenses. Stevenson in trouble. Got it to Matthews. Could not answer. Tipped away. Owe gives it to Sherfield. Sherfield. Oh, what a defensive play by Toussaint. That, that's impressive. That right there is elite one-on-one -on -one defense in transition. Toussaint is, I like to call it a dog. And he goes straight to the basket and gets fouled. That was a big time play. Just take a look at this steal right here. One on one. Think that you have him beat. That's great hands. Swipes down in the right moment as soon as you bring it down. Joe Toussaint, underrated defender. Five substitutions at the table 
Two for West Virginia, three for Oklahoma. Tucson's going to the line. So Tanner Groves will go off with those two fouls, but got a couple minutes out of him right there. Adrian Johnson and Kobe Johnson back in as well. We welcome our ESPN2 audience who just finished watching LeBron's quest for the all-time scoring record. Not tonight. You, you didn't think it was going to happen tonight, but potentially the next game alongside King McClure I'm Chucky Kemp it's West Virginia and Oklahoma King in a crucial game in the grand scheme of things for these two teams with respect to NCAA tournament hopes yeah I mean it, this game means so much for both programs and right now you're seeing the best players what we've seen so far the best players have been the best players Eric Stevenson got off to an extremely hot start Grant Sherfield now tar starting to take that tag go on a tear they have to be those guys tonight this right here is a must win for both programs. West Virginia has gone four minutes without a field goal. Stevenson. Six to shoot. Toussaint in trouble. Wild shot off the back iron and no good. Saved in by Jacob Groves. Here come the Sooners. That was great one-on-one -on -one defense from Jacob Groves right there. Sherfield from the mid-range. That's his favorite spot, but a tough shot right there. West Virginia's missed six straight from the field. The offenses have cooled after that hot start, and there was so much energy in this building. Physical take by Johnson. Godwin does a nice job to get the rebound. The last two possessions, Sam Godwin has done a great job of being able to box out Jimmy Bell Jr., a guy who is not easy to battle down low. Foul against West Virginia inside. Well, let's call it on West Virginia's number 10. Eric Stevenson picks up the second. Two calls for seven. Well, West Virginia leading Oklahoma in Morgantown. Don't go anywhere. It's the final day, the final game in the Big 12. The logo outside the Coliseum here in Morgantown as West Virginia leads Oklahoma 27-22. Not bad to have that one in the back pocket if you're West Virginia. Yeah, you know, we got the logo. The logo. Banner up in the rafters here at the Coliseum. It's Porter Moser. He's done a nice job getting his team to kind of settle into this. You see Sherfield's been a big part of that. When he's making shots, obviously things are a lot different for Oklahoma. Yeah, but one thing that we've seen, and we've seen this consistently, is he'll have big first half. But in the second half, he'll go scoreless or he'll really struggle. So can he put two halves together? Right now, 12 points already. That's a good start, but he has to be able to let that translate to the second half. But kudos to Porter Moser and his team because every single time, they, it seems as if this game is going to get a little bit of separation. They do a great job of keeping their calm and getting back in the ball game. Jacob Groves misses the first free throw. Eric Stevenson out there for West Virginia right now with two fouls. So keep an eye on that. Trey Mitchell, we have not seen much of him in this first half because he has two fouls already. And Groves hits the second free throw. Can they get this offense back started up? Stevenson, open, mid-range, that'll do it. Right now, something that we have not seen tonight is now that Oklahoma, Oklahoma has the bigger lineup. With Jacob Groves at the four, 
at 6'9". The second tallest player for West Virginia is 6'5". So now can Oklahoma take advantage down low, especially on the glass, with this tall lineup? Nolan Patience cannot get the shot to go. Nice shot by Stevenson to keep that alive and a foul against C.J. Nolan. Coming up at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific over on ESPN. The Great West Coast Conference rivalry. Number 12, Gonzaga. Number 18, St. Mary's capping the day off with a bang on ESPN. Well, if you're St. Mary's, you want to win the West Coast Conference, you got to go through those guys. What a season it's been for them. Gonzaga. Gonzaga needs to be careful because St. Mary's is a team who can make some noise in the NCAA tournament and can really heat up. They do a great job of spreading the floor and making you guard. It could be a, a problem for Gonzaga. One loss for Gonzaga there. St. Mary's undefeated in the West Coast Conference. And that's a good league, too. I mean, that's a league that's... You always think Gonzaga, but yeah. St. Mary's, there's some others in there that... They've made that a pretty prominent league throughout the country. And I love the late games. I love the West Coast games. Give me something to watch late at night. I mean, BYU, a uh, team who will be in the Big 12 next year, has arguably one of the best atmospheres in college basketball. They definitely top 10. Turnover. Sherfield and Cortez not on the same page. Those are the ones you can't have, just playing, throwing it out of bounds. Not on the same page there. Oh. Johnson, great block, and saved in play, but it's not ran down. It'll be West Virginia ball, but Bamisil with the bounce. That was an elite block. Thought he had a wide open layup, but Bamisil said no, sir. Third college stop in three years. George Washington, Virginia Tech, Oklahoma. 20 on the shot clock for West Virginia. Muhammad Wagi in the game for West Virginia. Johnson inside. Great finish! Shields off the defenders. Gets the end one chance. And that right there is what Keydrian Johnson is so good at. He loves to refuse the ball screen. Right there, as soon as he sees the defender's head turn, he goes the other way. Look at this. Great take right here, but a good job of refusing the ball screen. I mean, it's simple. Porter Moser pointed that out. He said, we cannot have defensive mistakes in shoot around. And right there, he emphasized. They refuse the ball screen, refuse the ball screen. And right there, you see Keidre Johnson just getting a wide open layup, or not a wide open layup, but an easy layup because they allowed him to refuse the ball screen. West Virginia, 8 of 16 at the free throw line in the first matchup, 9 of 10 at the free throw line in the first 14 minutes tonight. A huge shift for them from the first meeting in Norman. Mountaineer lead at 11 again. Jalen Hill into the paint. There's a whistle, though, first, and a foul going against West Virginia, against Joe Toussaint. That's his first. Eighth team foul to be the one and one for Jalen Hill. Does not get it. Stevenson could not get the finish, and somehow it's tipped back in. Wagi got a piece of it, maybe. Might have come off of Oway. Sherfield, quick answer. He's automatic good. from that yeah, that's spot. That's good recognition right there. Basketball. You had the big on you. Well, go strong and take it. And Keidrian Johnson just imposing his will, getting to the rim whenever he wants. 
Johnson had just two points against TCU midweek. Ole, whistle, foul against Seth Wilson. West Virginia can't believe it. When you play a smaller lineup and you go over to contest, as a guard, you have to be able to block out and make sure the big is not inside. And right here, somebody has to stop Keydrian Johnson because he is getting downhill whenever he wants to. Keydrian has 11, Stevenson has 15 as Owe misses the first free throw. On the other side for Oklahoma, it's basically been Sherfield. He has 14 of their 25. Bijan Cortez had a couple buckets early that were big for them to kind of get them into the game, but since that point, it's had to be Sherfield. Owe one of two at the line. Big 445 here for the Sooners, isn't it? Hey, you have to be able to block out right now and get stops. I mean, I expect Wagi to crash the glass extremely hard, but Jalen Hill, when they switch, whoever, whatever guard is down low has to do a great job of getting him out the paint and blocking out. Eight to shoot. Good defense. No good. Wagi Stevenson. Three ball! Team for Stevenson. Hill can't answer. Skips it across. Wilson. It's good. Uh oh. This place is rocking. Stolen, Johnson, transition. He wants it, and a whistle against Yuzan. <laughs> we said it from the jump. You have to know where Eric Stevenson is. Seth Wilson getting the party started, capping off the big running. <laughs> Mama, there goes that man right there. To the point about, to Tom's point about turnovers, Oklahoma in the in Big 12 play alone, minus four and a half in turnover margin. That's 10th in the conference. That's the worst in the conference. That's been an issue all season for the Sooners. Yeah, they, they just struggle. Point blank period, they're struggling right now. And I think the biggest reason why they're struggling is because they allowed Stevenson to be able to be comfortable and also in this matchup Oklahoma is a team that Offensively, they do not have a lot of guys who they call shot clock guys end of a shot clock You can give them the ball and they can be able to create so With West Virginia's defense whenever you switch you switch one through five you get Oklahoma out of their system They need their system to be able to create offense and when they're not able to pass the ball swing it along when they're not comfortable and you get them out the rhythm, they struggle to score. Johnson hits the first one, points off turnovers 15 to 2 in the favor of the Mountaineers. That has been a huge story so far as they have built a 19 point lead. Make it 20. And this is a complete flip at the free throw line for them from that first matchup. Sherfield open for three. They needed it. We've seen some big comebacks in the Big 12. It's never over. Saw Texas Tech come back from 20 plus down to Iowa State in Lubbock this week. There's a whistle against Bijan Cortez. Well, 
What a women's basketball triple header we have for you tomorrow afternoon on ESPN2 and the app. Deja Kelly, number 11, North Carolina, against Haley Van Lith and Louisville in our first game at noon Eastern. Then Angel Reese, an undefeated number three LSU taking on Texas A&M. And we cap the afternoon with the Big Ten matchup between Taylor Mikesell with number 10, Ohio State, and Diamond Miller with number eight, Maryland. Kim Mulkey at LSU, 22 and 0 this season. <laughs> there it is, top 25 teams in action tomorrow. LSU 22 and 0 on the season. Not too bad for Kim Mulkey down there in Baton Rouge. You know, one thing about Kim Mulkey, say what you want to say about her, but that woman wins. Wherever she goes, she is an absolute winner. I mean, she has that team playing incredible basketball. Angel Reese licking her fingers, doing TikTok dances on the court. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun sight to watch. It's the Groves. Nolan, somebody's got to hit a shot for the Sooners. Surefield. Offensive rebound. Oh, my goodness. Wagi, absolute denial. Wilson rises. Hits. Man, this is a great block by Waggy. And Seth Wilson, he, he's such a great shooter. When he sets his feet, when he takes the right shots, his form is so picture perfect, elbow straight, great rotation on the basketball, and he's taking the basketball gods right now because he's been so up and down this year. Groves hit the first free throw, snapping a two-minute and 25-second scoring drought. Something's got to change for the Sooners right now. How, how do you get this offense going? Well, the biggest thing. How do you get the defense going, too? Yeah, I think, I think that's the bigger thing. That's the bigger problem right now. I mean, you've given up 51 points to West Virginia, a team who does not score the ball at this rate. Last matchup, you gave up 76. Right now, you're giving up 51 in the first half. So I think the biggest problem right now that you're, that you're dealing with is getting stops defensively. That's where it starts with it. You know, Porter Moser is just trying to throw lineups out there to see what works. He's just trying to pray for any type of answer. Stevenson. Oh, my goodness. Four for their last four from the field. <laughs> Eric Stevenson has 21. Hey, I, I, I love the energy and the passion that he plays with. I mean, right there, looking at me right there, because a the guy who I've had in my battles with, but I respect him because he's the ultimate competitor. Groves can't answer. Owe, another offensive rebound. He's been a bright spot for them in this first half. The most points scored in the first half of a game this season by West Virginia. There's still 90 seconds to play in this first frame. On this last possession, I mean, the reason why Eric Stevenson saw that shot go in is they went under the ball screen. A guy who's already hit about four threes in the first half, there's no way you can go under a ball screen. Wild shot tipped out of play there to be Oklahoma ball. What's going through your head as a player right now wearing the Oklahoma colors? So listen, I've actually been in this exact scenario. We were, I think it was my sophomore year, we had just became the number one team in the country. Uh, first time ever in program history. We come to Morgantown on Monday because that's that's when the rankings release. Number one, come to Morgantown on Monday, and from the first pass, Ishmael Wainwright threw the ball to the student section, and I knew it was going to be a long night. <laughs> we ended up losing about 30 here. First thing in my mind was, let, 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 let me get out of here because I don't want to be here anymore. And the crowd was just like this. They ended up rushing the court on us afterwards. But in my, in my mind, I was like, let's get out of here because I don't want any part of this. But right now, if you're OU, there's two halves to the game. We had no chance in the second half. Hopefully, OU does. So timeout, West Virginia. We'll be back in 30 seconds.
got to be feeling pretty good if you're that man in the huddle, Bob Huggins. It's been up and down for both of these teams. It's been up and down, but it couldn't have gone much better so far for them. I mean, the way that they're scoring the ball on the offensive side, and I think what I've been most impressed with is, is West Virginia's defense. I mean, outside of Sherfield, they have done a great job of taking everybody away. They've made it extremely tough. They've switched. They have made the lanes hard to penetrate on, and when you go to the rim, you have rim protection tonight, something that we typically don't see from them. I mean, this first half, it, like you said, it could not have been drawn up any better by Huggins. Ten to shoot for West Virginia. Stevenson wants to be the one to do it right now. Lost it on the baseline, got it back and puts it in. 23 for Stevenson in the first half. He's just in that zone right now. It's going to be extremely difficult. The best thing for OU is that the half is going to end. And hopefully he comes out cold in the second half. Sooners need something good to go to the half on. Yuzan lost it. Stevenson, five seconds. Matthews, Johnson lost his footing, and there's a travel called against Johnson. It looked like he just slipped somewhere down there. He might have wanted a foul. John Higgins disagrees. Uh, Sherfield played that perfectly, anticipating that he was going to hit the Euro step right there, beat him to that spot, when honestly he should have just kept going straight and had a wide open layup. Oklahoma hit a buzzer beater last year here at the end of the first half. It was Jacob Groves. This time, Tanner Groves, similar spot. He does not get it. Very close, though. Unlike our halftime score, Eric Stevenson had a career-high 31 against Auburn in this building last Saturday. He has 23 at the break as they lead the Sooners by 26. Their most points in a first half this season. An absolute clinic from Bob Huggins and company. We go to the studio, our halftime report. Kevin Connors, John Crispin, and Tom Crean. All right, Chuck, you're dominant, dominant. Back in Morgantown, and it has been all Mountaineers. You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. 56-30, West Virginia leads Oklahoma in a game that has a lot of meaning in the grand scheme of things. A resume builder for both of these two teams. Alongside King McClure, I'm Chucky Kemp. What do you say about that first half? I mean, my goodness. Man, oh man, I feel like Coach Huggins, everything that he wanted plus more happened. I mean, Eric Stevenson, the explosion that he had from the offensive side. I mean, it was too easy. You let a good scorer like this, you let a good shooter like this get going. See one go in uncontested. All of a sudden, you will be in for a long night. And this is what exactly happened. Once he sees one go in, you have to be there on the catch. You cannot allow him to get him up because he's a confidence type of player. When he sees one go in, he will heat up quickly. And once his confidence starts going, there's no slowing him down. 23 points, eight shy of his career high that he set a week ago against Auburn. Kedron Johnson pitched in as well, 13 points. He was really aggressive, getting downhill, getting to the hoop. Seven for seven from the free throw line. They've been tremendous at the stripe tonight, 13 of 14. And that's why they lead by 26. On the other side, Oklahoma, something has to change. What was said at halftime? What do you what do you need to see in these first few minutes? I think you learn a lot about your team right now. And if, if based off of me being in locker rooms, me being down big at half, didn't happen often, but the few times that it did happen, Juggy. The message is simple. You have to go out there, forget the first half, and start brand new. Yeah, the score, you're down by 26, but you have to simply forget the first half and play the way that you were supposed to play from the jump. Much better start there. Milos Yuzan with a nice bucket to start things off. That's an extremely talented freshman who has a really bright future. And the one thing about Uzan, he's a great point guard, great vision, great facilitator. I mean, I think he can go to lengths as far as scoring the ball that Eddie has not reached before. I think that he can really become a consistent double-digit scorer in the Big 12 every single night. Looking at his skill set, looking at his game, I think he has a lot of potential. More of a mindset for him, just be more aggressive, more confident. 
Yeah, his skills are there. It's 110% a mindset, and he's young. He's a freshman. He's, he's ha being asked to do a lot right now for a freshman. Jimmy Bell Jr., great pass. Mitchell, who we didn't see on much, much of any in the first half because of foul trouble misses. Hill, Euro, oh my goodness, nice move inside, and it's four quick ones for the Sooners. And if you're OU, the one thing that you have to understand is that you're not going to be able to cut this down at one time. You're going to have to do it incrementally. Take your time and set goals. By the first media, maybe set it to 16. The next media, 12 or, or, or 10. Slowly but surely. And it looks like Tanner Groves just picked up his third foul almost immediately in this second half. That was another storyline in the first half. Groves went to the bench very quickly with two fouls. And already back in that foul trouble here. Groves and Bell battling. That was a physical game between those two and Norman. Stevenson, two fades. Stevenson! Oh that man cannot miss. Oh my goodness. You see, he shot the ball with extra arc right there. Whenever you're shooting a tough shot, you see a lot of talented offensive players shoot the ball with extra arc because it has a better chance of dropping in. Handoff Sherfield looking for the answer. Six to shoot for Bijan Cortez. Blocked. Matthews, here comes Stevenson. Mitchell to his right, keeps it, gets the rebound, and he's fouled. Two shots coming up for Eric Stevenson. Take a look at this. This is just one-on-one. -on -one. Basketball IQ. Contested shot, tough shot. Look how high he shot the ball because it has a better chance of just dropping straight in. That is what an elite score looks like. 21 a game over his last three. 17 against TCU, 31 against Auburn, 16 against Texas Tech. And tonight, so far, with 26. As Tanner Groves goes to the bench, Sam Godwin in. in. Oklahoma, this is a team that seven days ago beat Alabama by 24 points. That was the number two team in the country at the time. Yuzan, no, Godwin. Third chance, no. Trying to keep it alive, here comes Matthews. Matthews contested. Kept alive by Mitchell. Stevenson back to work, that's too easy. That's just way too easy, and you would think that Oklahoma would be able to come out here with a little bit more attention to detail on the defensive side, but we've seen just too many easy buckets early, and this right here is one of them. Nobody picks up the basketball, just a straight line drive, no help side, and Eric Stevenson just continuing to pick up where he left off. He might just have a new career high by the end of the night. He's just three away from tying it. Cortez misses the first free throw. Well, Sunday after the NFL Pro Bowl games on ESPN and the app, we'll have the NBA, Joel Embiid, and the Sixers at Madison Square Garden taking on Julius Randle and the Knicks, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. A couple All-Stars going head-to-head. -head. Where's Kyrie land? <laughs> I think the only way Ky only where Kyrie can go is L.A. I mean, I heard Dallas. I hope he doesn't come to Dallas, but but L.A. Uh, L.A. I think is the spot for him. I think they're the only team that can actually deal with him and handle him. 
because, I mean, he, he confuses a lot of people. And there's a narrative that's been built on him that he's problematic and everything. I don't think that's 100% true. Um, I think that he just stands on what he believes. And, and whatever that is, I, okay, whatever. But I think that L.A. is the only team that can deal with them. Well, it worked once with LeBron. We'll see if maybe they get a second go at it. Turnover on West Virginia. Huggins not happy. This is a team that's given up some leads this year, that's led in a lot of games. They led by Xavier by seven at halftime. They got outscored by 17 in the second half, led by 11 at halftime at Kansas State, lost that game, led huge against Auburn. And the Tigers pulled it back as close as one. So West Virginia has to keep their foot on the gas here. Now this is a different level of lead that they've got. And of course in this building, but Stevenson got it! And he ties this career high set seven days ago. Oway gets his own miss, can't put it back in, and that is how tonight's gone for the Sooners. Always stripped it again. He has fantastic hands defensively. Sherfield. No good. Rebound of Conquo, and he's tied up. It'll be West Virginia ball. Eric Stevenson. He's trying to crank the John Denver early tonight. <laughs> Eric Stevenson just looked over at me and said 40. I don't know what that symbolizes, Chucky, but I hope, I hope we're in for a show. Twenty-nine point lead for the Mountaineers of West Virginia over the Oklahoma Sooners trying to get revenge in a big way. The Big 12 now on ESPN Plus must have for Big 12 basketball fans featuring two women's games Tuesday night. The Mountaineers take on Oklahoma State and the number 20 Sooners square off against Baylor. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. That's John Flowers in the student section. Played four years here at West Virginia. Back in the Big East days. Part of the Big East championship team. He's getting the student experience tonight. Came back and said he wanted to be, wanted to get the full student experience. They've loved every second of what they've seen from this West Virginia team. Trey Mitchell. Good ball movement here to Matthews. No good, Hill rebounds. You know, I, th I find it incredible that West Virginia is doing all of this with Trey Mitchell being so quiet and really hasn't even inserted himself into the game as far as scoring. Owe with a nice take but missed the layup. Otega Owe missed that layup there. He missed a put back that was point blank, but he's been a little bit of a bright spot. And you talked about wanting to see more of him. This is a guy who looks like he has a little bit of a future as well. Him and Yuzan, both true freshmen. Yeah, I mean, Owe has just, he has that juice to him. That, that energy that, that you need when you're playing at this level. And frankly, OU is not really an athletic team when you look at it top to bottom. So Otega Owe gives them that athleticism that they're really missing. Mitchell fires up a wild shot. Thought he was fouled. Yeah, you're not getting that one. You're not, you're not hard. You're, 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 not, you're not getting that one, Mitchell. <laughs> Jacob Groves enters for Jalen Hill. Bob Huggins, a little upset with that one, but I think he's got to be pretty happy right now overall. He wants to see the next 14 minutes tick off, but what an incredible performance. Sherfield, nice pass. Godwin, oh my goodness. Sam Godwin, I just told you before the game, he's got a little bounce. Oh, Sam Godwin is sneaky bouncy. If you watch his, uh, some of his swarming that he's done over the past few games, the whole season actually, you'll see him on tip dunk, tip back dunks. He's quick, his quick twitch muscles are great. Also an underrated rim protector. Oh. Well, Conquo almost had an incredible put back himself right there. Jacob Groves, pump fake. Nice take off the glass. 
Lead down to 25. That was that YMCA take right there. Wow, that's a tough angle off the glass right there. Just fundamental. Uh, a little too fundamental. Stevenson. Conquo, he plays with such great energy, but gives it away. Uh -oh. Here's Oway. Oh, and he's tripped. Stevenson, I think, was initially going to foul him and then tried to help him brace his fall, but more great defense by Oway. Look at this baseline off the glass runner. That's just a great take, great pump baking. They need. They need him to be the Jacob Groves that they expected him to be. Because he provides so much to this team. And he's been so up and down. I think both of the brothers have been extremely up and down. And they need consistency out of both of them. But more so Jacob because you know, there's high expectations on him. And he's capable. That's the biggest thing. They know that he can do it. They know that he can perform. He just has to go out there and do it. Get out of his own head and go out there and perform. Away misses the second, but an offensive rebound. Sherfield inside, good patience, gets the bucket. And we talked about Sherfield being able to impact the game in other ways outside of scoring. And the one thing I'm actually seeing from him right now is positive body language. He's actually encouraging his teammates, saying, let's keep going, let's go. And he has a little bit of juice on defense that he didn't necessarily have, especially the first Bedlam game that I did. And Bama Seal right here, I can really spark something. But you see the juice and the energy that Oklahoma has come out in the second half with that they have not had in, in, in prior games. Bob Huggins hopped off his stool there, trying to get his team some energy right now. Matthews falls down, and it ends up a turnover. And Oklahoma with a little surge here, a 7-0 run for the Sooners. And this is one of those games you have to be able to insert your athletes. So Otega Owe, Joe Bamasil, those guys are athletic on the perimeter. They will be huge if they want to make a comeback. We'll see. The Sooners not going quietly, but still, they trail by 20. All right, James, it's time to get out of your feet. West Virginia up 20, but the Sooners on a 9-0 run over the last minute and 42 seconds, trying to make a push here in the second half. Still more hoops coming your way, though. 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific on ESPN. West Coast Conference rivalry. Number 12, Gonzaga at number 18, St. Mary's. The rematch of this one, and Gonzaga is trailing St. Mary's by a game in the West Coast Conference standings. The rematch is the final game of the regular season in Spokane. So this one, is absolutely huge though. I mean, yeah. the way St. Mary's is playing, haven't lost in the conference yet. Gonzaga has to feel like, man, we, we gotta get this one tonight. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like this is the first year where it's not a guarantee that Gonzaga will win that league. We'll get to catch that one at the hotel after this one. Godwin, a nice dunk moments ago. That was blocked by Kedrian Johnson and it goes off of Sam Godwin. Kedrian's played well tonight. You mentioned this earlier. Trey Mitchell, 12 minutes tonight. Two points, and they lead by 20. You wouldn't have believed it if I told you before the game. Mitchell. Nice rebound, Waki. And he's fouled after the offensive board. And that's where you have to be able to block out right there. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, you cannot turn that into a jumping battle with Wagi. You have to be able to block him out and get him away from the lane. If it turns into a jumping battle, he is too good of an athlete. 6'10", 225. Toussaint fouled along the sideline by Godwin. That's his fourth foul. So Tanner Groves comes back to the table to check in for Godwin. Groves has three. 
You know, Chucky, as a player, I feel like when you're making big comebacks, there are two big hurdles that you have to overcome. And I think one of the biggest hurdles, the first one is when you're at that 20-point threshold and you want to get it under 20, that's a big hurdle. And then the single-digit threshold to get it under 10. When you're making a comeback, it, it seems like it's extremely hard in those two points of the game. Toussaint going to the line when we come back. Oklahoma down 20 on the road. Bob Huggins has his team up 20 here in Morgantown. They've got to take care of business in this building the rest of the way. This schedule is so dangerous. They've got Iowa State coming here on Wednesday. They'll welcome Texas Tech and Oklahoma State on the 18th and 20th. And really, it, talk about big games. What do they need to do to make the tournament? If you protect the home court the rest of the way, you, you probably are in. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the good thing and the bad thing about the league being so tough, I mean, the good thing is that every single game you have an opportunity to, to pick up a really good win that will boost your resume. But the bad thing is you can have stretches where you lose two or three in a row because there's no off night. Toussaint snaps a 9-0 run for Oklahoma over the last 2.45. They are 15 of 17 at the free throw line tonight. A 16 of 18. That's a welcome sight for Bob Huggins and this fan base. As they've struggled at the line this season. Jacob and Tanner Groves. Five combined fouls, five combined points for the two of them as Waggy gets the block. Torn away. What great hustle play by Wagi and Toussaint. And right there was the 50-50 basketball. Who wants it? Bamasil bent over to get it. Toussaint dove on the floor. Whoever dives on the floor first normally wins that battle in 50-50 balls. West Virginia wanted it more. Toussaint on the back cut. What a connection right there. That's a great pass. Their offense is rolling right now. Look at this pass right here. This great cut. You try to overplay it. You try to deny on the perimeter. Well, you can get backdoor cut. And that's a great pass. Guard to guard. Sherfield goes off for Oklahoma. Grant Sherfield has 16 points tonight. Nobody else has more than six for the Sooners. Tanner goes block. Loggy has shut it down. And the crowd, they love it. He's a great athlete. And the one thing about being a good shot blocker, you have to have great timing. And that's something that he just has naturally. Cortez fouled on his way to the hoop after the cut. Two shots coming up for Bijan. Talk about upcoming schedule. Still 10.54 to play, but a mountain to climb for the Sooners. They go to Baylor on Wednesday. They've got Kansas after that, Kansas State, and then at Texas. I said it's, it's a good and a bad thing. I mean, all of those wins are great resume, resume boosters. And as of right now, they need to pick up really big wins. But that's also tough. I mean, you come not ready to play, you can drop all four real quick. So they have to be able to regroup. And I think it starts right now. It's the biggest thing. You have to cut this lead down and, and play for pride at the end of the day so you can get this, whatever happens in the rest of this game. You have to be able to translate it and make sure that it does, this does not have a repeat. They trap Wilson. Wagi turns. Contested. Cannot get the roll. And it goes off West Virginia. It'll be Oklahoma basketball.
Sooners have shot just 37% from the field tonight. 27 from three. And minus seven in the rebound category, taken away. Wilson going the other direction, lays it up and in. You said it early, Bob Huggins said this is one of the worst defensive teams he's had. He said, we'll get better, and we're getting better. They look like they've gotten better tonight. And he said, they are slowly making progress every single day in practice. And you can tell, it's starting to translate to the game. Oh, good What pass. a feed! Rocky! They'll keep partying. We'll be back in 30. Virginia 72, Oklahoma 45. You talked about being on the wrong end of this. You've been on the right end of it too, though. Oh, yeah. When everything is going right, nothing can go wrong. And Keydrian Johnson, just two back-to-back -back great dimes. One in the half court, one in transition. Then he threw up the goggles right there like he sees everything. Uh, they're having fun right now. They're enjoying this. And, and they're playing great. West Virginia scored 72 in the entire game against TCU earlier this week. They're already sitting on that number with 9.20 to play. Owe almost had another steal. It'll stay at this end with the Mountaineers. We've not seen Eric Stevenson for a while here, and he's still sitting on that career high 31 points. What are you looking at, Wagi, big night for him tonight. A little bit of a reckless pass right there. Muhammad Wagi, four points, five rebounds, three blocks. Toussaint, Yuzan almost took it away. One to shoot. Air ball. Good defensive possession right there from the Sooners. Yeah, that was probably one of the best defensive possessions we've seen all night. And Sherfield has just two points here in the second half after 14 in the first. Lost it. Out in front, Kedrian Johnson. Got it! Shields off the defender and finishes. What a pass right here. Great awareness. Trey Mitchell just sees it and just throws it up because he sees Kedrian Johnson running. And Kedrian Johnson at the rim is just so special and so talented. Such a great finisher. Well, who hasn't played well tonight for West Virginia? We keep talking about it. Stevenson obviously set the tone early. But everyone's kind of done their part. Even the guys who haven't put up big numbers. Now, Trey Mitchell only has two points, but plays like that. I mean, they're just really getting after them defensively. Uh, right there, you see Keetrian Johnson tap the ball from behind and create that steal. And you just see them getting in passing lanes, being active. I mean, this honestly might be the best I've ever seen West Virginia look this season on the defensive side. Sherfield rims out. Jimmy Bell rebounds. Oklahoma down 30. It, it just feels like if you're the Sooners right now, you just want to get out of here. Get back to the drawing board and get back to work. Yeah, I mean, you know, at first they showed, they showed signs. They showed a, a spark of energy, but... As this game has continued to go on, it, it almost looks like that the, the Sooners look defeated. You're right. They responded right out of the gates. They bounced back after a good start. They
responded again shortly after when West Virginia pushed into double digits. And that's going to do it for Tanner Groves. He just fouled out. And then even in this second half, Oklahoma put together that 9-0 run, got it down to 20, and you kind of talked about getting past that 20-point mark, getting to the next threshold. They couldn't do it, and West Virginia said, all right, it's, we're done with this. Yeah, it just seemed like after they made their push, their offense just got a little shook. I mean, they turned the energy up on the defensive side, West Virginia did. And like I said just a minute ago, this is probably the best I've seen them look defensively all season. Joe Toussaint, the Iowa transfer at the free throw line. Bob Huggins' little smile there for Kelly Self. <laughs> You don't see him smile too many times during games. He's always locked in, which we have to respect. I mean, as a competitor, as a coach, he's always fiery, always locked in. Yuzan can't get the roll. I mean, they've had so many of those just roll off the rim as Godwin still fighting, gets the offensive rebound and is fouled. And that'll take us to a timeout. All Mountaineers in Morgantown. A little bit on what lies ahead for both of these teams. West Virginia at home against Iowa State. Oklahoma goes to Baylor. Oklahoma has the toughest remaining schedule based on opponent win percentage at almost 74%. And we talked about Baylor, Kansas, K-State, Texas. That's your next four. You're not playing well right now. You gotta find a way against those teams. And on the flip side, you talked about it though, you can get some momentum because the league's so good. So if you get a win, the sun is shining. Now one thing about it is they're led by a great man. They're led by Porter Moser. And I think if any coach can figure this out, it will be Porter Moser. West Virginia, six of their remaining nine are ranked in the top 25. Those six ranked teams in the Big 12, all in the top 15. There's not another conference with six ranked teams. All the Big 12 ones are in the top 15 in the country. And I think this is a West Virginia team who could easily, their record could easily be flipped. And I think they've just been on the unlucky end of a, a few few games. They've had a few unfortunate things happen to them during games. Uh, but I, I think this is a West Virginia team who can compete with the best of them in the league. Stay at this end. Goes off Sam Godwin. What's Porter Moser going to be most upset about after this game? I think the defense. I, mean, I, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, offensively, you knew that you had your struggles. You knew that you would struggle against the West Virginia team that switched one through five. So I think the defensive side, because I think defense is all about effort. Uh, you really can't. I mean, you can coach defense as far as strategy and scheme, but at the end of the day, this comes down to heart. Like, do you want to step in front of this guy and stop him? Uh, I feel like it's all effort, and I, I don't know if Oklahoma can say that they put their best effort forth on the defensive side. Eric Stevenson getting an opportunity here late back in the game for West Virginia as Jimmy Bell misses the first free throw. And another thing that Porter Moses is not going to be happy with is scouting report errors. He emphasized, he was sitting there on the sideline and he had his players sit along the baseline and talked about how they wanted to guard Stevenson. They talked about they wanted to face guard and they didn't want to allow him to get easy catches, get easy looks. But sure enough, as soon as you get to the game, that's what happened. He got by himself a few times, saw the ball go in early, and they had a lot of scouting report errors. Nolan fouled. He's got two free throws coming up. Is it as simple, too? Is it just, look, if you're guarding Eric Stevenson, you don't leave him. You don't help. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's simple because that that's a guy who can heat up like you're seeing tonight. I mean, I was at Baylor, that's the one thing. We, we used to call those type of guys MDs, must dribble. 
So the only way you do your job is if he dribbles. If he gets a catch and shoot three, that is on you because that's not that's not allowed. You must make that guy put the ball on the floor. Now, if he puts the ball on the floor and he scores over you, you did your job because he did not get a catch and shoot three. But the way Porter Moser wanted to guard him, it was not applied today. Yeah. So I know Porter Moser, that's probably the biggest thing. That's probably number one, actually. That's number one thing that he will talk about. Porter Moser knows how to win. He's just trying to get these guys right now to follow his lead as Godwin's called for the foul and his night is done. That's Godwin's fifth. It's just a great pass. I mean, Jimmy Bell being able to take his time, not trying to force it, not trying to rush it, but kicked it to Trey Mitchell right there who got fouled. I mean, that whole team is just playing well right now. They, they, they just have it rolling. You have nights like this, Chucky, where everything goes right, but then if you're, you also have nights like this where everything goes wrong. Porter Moser and company last year had their backs against the wall down the stretch, got a regular season finale win in Manhattan over Kansas State, went to the Big 12 tournament, upset Baylor, and it just wasn't quite enough. They almost beat Texas Tech in the second round in Kansas City, but it just wasn't enough for the NCAA tournament. There's plenty of time, but they got work to do, and Eric Stevenson, man, he has had a night. He's been letting you know about it, too. <laughs> I mean, I've seen him on the court a few times in college. Maybe that talks about how old Stevenson is or maybe how young I am, but I played against him when he was at Wichita State, and he, he was the same guy. I mean, that same dude that you see right now, he was still talking. He talked to me the whole game, and they had us down. As another example, they had us down by 30 at Wichita State. Greg Marshall and that Wichita State team had us down 30 my senior year at Baylor. Eric Stevenson was on that team. We cut the lead down to six. One of my teammates takes a dumb shot. And then we lose the momentum. <laughs> well, started at Wichita State a couple of years. Went to Washington. We averaged nine and a half. South Carolina under Frank Martin last year. Martin gets fired, goes to UMass, and then transfers to West Virginia as the crowd was chanting, we want 40 from Eric Stevenson. And this has been his best season as a college basketball player. And he's had these games which I think, you know, you look at the NCAA tournament and kind of what breeds success there. The Big 12's had success in the tournament, and you get a guy like Stevenson who can get hot, and you think, well? Yeah, I mean, they play like this on the defensive side, but, I mean, look at some of the coaches that Stevenson played for. I mean, Greg Marshall, he had success. Not talking about what he did, but he had success. Frank Martin, great coach. Bob Huggins, elite of elites. I mean, he played for some really good coaches. And I'm sure he played. He has a lot of stories about getting chewed out. <laughs> Bamisil, baseline, floats it. Good finish right there from Joe Bamisil. You know, I think Bamisil is a guy who you might see start playing a little bit more because I think he has so much talent. I mean, he averaged about 16 or 17 last year. He, he can get buckets. He's not new to that. So I think that's a guy with his athleticism, with his scoring ability. He's a guy that you have to put on the court. You have to start trusting because you're not playing well and you need answers. And I think he can maybe give you some of those answers and take some of this pressure off of Sherfield. Stevenson, career high 32, misses the three. The hardest thing as a player, right, is knowing the amount of points you have and trying to get to a certain mark. <laughs> because there would be times I'd have 29 and I wanted 30 and I could never get 30 because I knew in my head, I was like, I put so much pressure. I got to get 30. I got to get 30. And I could never do it. Nice cut here by Nolan. CJ Nolan, Texas native. 
started the first eight games, then Milos Yuzan took his spot in the starting lineup. West Virginia 540 away from becoming 9-0 this season when they score 80 or more points. Okonkwo offensive rebound. Stevenson lobs it. Okonkwo! Bamasil answers with the three. Joe Bamasil can, can really hoop. He is a talent, and he needs to be let loose, and he needs to get the reins taken off of him because he can really help this OU team. Stevenson, no whistle. Yuzan. Oh, by Oconquo, my goodness. Down court to Stevenson, who lays it in easily. What a block. That's the one thing about West Virginia's interior. When you look at Jimmy Bell, he's not really a shot blocker, more of a, a tank down low. But the other two that come off the bench, Okonkwo and Waggy, elite rim protectors. They honestly change the whole defense of West Virginia. Stevenson might not have many more chances here, up 30 with just over four to play. Another one, no, Okonkwo! Oh. Holy mama! <laughs> he was angry! <laughs> wow. And, and that's just right there, talking about effort. Uh, just no block out, just watching the ball go up. Uh, that, that, that's the type of plays that you show on film. I mean, just, just no, no effort, period. Time out on the floor. West Virginia. All Over on ESPN News, it's in the on-deck circle, Chucky. Well, we will hope it's a closer game than this one because West Virginia has been all over Oklahoma and some exclamation marks here. Okonkwo is putting on a show. Display of athleticism is elite and look at the tip dunk right here he just soared out of nowhere and the best part about it is the smile that he has on the way back he's just so happy to do those things he's from maidenhead england he got a late start as far as his basketball career goes he excelled as a tennis player in england before starting his basketball career, he came to the U.S. in August of 2020, attended Beckley Prep in Beckley, West Virginia. And he was a guy last year when we talked to Coach Huggins early in the season. They were like, we like this guy. And they think he's got a bright future. And certainly the way he plays, which is plays hard, great attitude, fits what Bob Huggins wants. Kobe Johnson. Stevenson one to shoot. Not going to get it off. 324 to play. West Virginia will snap a seven game losing streak against Oklahoma dating back to the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City back in 2019. Emmett Matthews was a freshman in his first stint here at West Virginia. Owe is blocked. Poked away. Another European player in as well. Benny Schroeder, a freshman from Munich, Germany. Played 10 minutes against TCU. This is a guy they think might have a future as well. One of the most talented international prospects who chose the college route. And there's Josiah Harris, a freshman from Canton, Ohio, which brings the bench to their feet. Everybody is pitching in right now. Whistle against Trey Mitchell. Otega Owe going to the hoop. Oh, 
Ortega Owe, freshman from Somerset, New Jersey. Nine points, four boards, couple steals against Oklahoma State. He could be a guy, we talked about him defensively, but his athleticism, physicality, he could be a guy both ways could be really effective. Yeah, he, he's so hard to stop when he's attacking downhill because he's so athletic and so strong. And he gets so low when he drives that you really have no choice but to foul him. He's a strong driver. The next level for him is to be able to shoot the three consistently. Because once he does that, he'll be extremely hard to stop. But he's a great driver with a lot of potential. A oh, nice ovation there for Eric Stevenson going off and a word from Bob Huggins. Stevenson Knight finishes a career high 34 points, 6 for 11 from long distance. He set the tone in this game and kept it going. He scored the first eight for West Virginia in the second half. That's Jamel King, a sophomore from Uniontown, Alabama. You said everyone's getting in on it, and he pulls down the rebound, too. Now, I think it's always a good sign of, and you can tell how much a team likes each other by how much they celebrate when the guys who don't typically play score. In West Virginia right now, if you see, if you look at how they're all celebrating with each other, Oconquo dropped it and threw it off the back of the shot clock. <laughs> and you just watch, watch the bench and just how they're celebrating and how they're happy for their teammate success. You can tell this group really likes each other, and it's almost a family atmosphere for sure. Bamisil got loose and gets an easy layup. It's just one for West Virginia you look back at in a couple weeks and say that was the turning point. Like, that's what set us on the right path is... We get set for another big game before you answer that. Gonzaga St. Mary's coming up 10.30 Eastern, about 10 minutes over on ESPN. That is a huge matchup in the West Coast Conference. Make sure you head over there in just a moment. But can this be the staple for West Virginia? Yeah, I think it gives you confidence. So I think that's ultimately what it does. I mean, it shows you that the level that you can be at when you're at your best. So I think this gives them confidence confidence and they see that the potential that they had is now coming to fruition. Patrick Sumnick, a sophomore from Green Bay, Wisconsin, misses the first free throw opportunity. Played sparingly off and on this season. He misses both free throws as Schroeder falls to the ground on the free throw rebound. Up for Sumnick. Nice pass right there for Harris. No good. For Oklahoma. Put a bow on it for us for the Sooners. What, what's next? for Oklahoma, what do they have to do after this game? Uh, I think this as a player, this is one of those times where you, know, you have to have almost a player-led meeting to where you're talking to your teammates and, and, and you're trying to basically reassess and reevaluate what's next for you guys. How to fix this, how to come to a, come to terms and, and, and basically, what's the answer? And how do we start winning ball games? And I think that's something that I would do. If I was on the court, if I was on OU as a player, that's something I would do as soon as we get back. Player-led teams are the best type of teams, and they need a leader. They need somebody to emerge as that leader to be able to fix this, because the coach can only do so much. It's been a bad stretch for the Sooners, and what you know, we talked about it, the win over Alabama, they dominated one of the best teams in the country but the TCU game before that got off to a bad start. The Oklahoma State game this week got off to a bad start. A bad start here in Morgantown. Now they responded, but over the course of the game, they just let it slip away. Over the course of the first half, really. No Conquo. Hits them both. It is just a celebration in the Coliseum tonight. Bamasil can't get the roll. Tipped back in by Schroeder. 
26 seconds on the clock. That should do it for this one. What a performance came from West Virginia. Uh, they played well defensively. They were special. They were the best that they have been all year on the defensive side. That snaps a seven-game losing streak dating back to 2019. Bob Huggins and West Virginia dominate Oklahoma in Morgantown. 93-61, the final. Eric Stevenson was the man. A career night, 34 points, topping his career high set just a week ago. For King McClure and our entire crew, I'm Chucky Kemp. So long from Morgantown, we go to Oregon, Arizona State, Dave Fleming, and Sean Forner.